What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again. And this time we are here with Steve Zing of Danzig and Black29. It is great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for being here, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime, man. Anytime. Your new album, The Waiting, is absolutely kick-ass. It's one of my personal favorite releases so far for 2023. This is the first uh, Black 29 album since Love and Anger. I believe that came out in 2016. So did it just feel like you were sort of picking up where you left off after Love and Anger? Or were you kind of like making a new beginning for Black 29 and exploring more uncharted territory? You know, it's one of those things where... Um, you know, to pick up or start something new, it's, it's just like, it's a continuation of just whatever you're, I'm feeling at the time, right? You know, it's like, I don't really particularly write for any style or anything like that. So I think this album, what's different with this than Love and Anger, this one takes you more on a, on a ride. Excuse me, and it goes. You know, it's kind of got this roller coaster thing where you got highs and lows and highs and lows, and um, it's it's probably due to you know my ADD <laughs> supreme uh, thing that I have with listening to music. Like when I listen to music, like it's hard for me to listen to a whole song. Right, I'll be on a treadmill for thirty minutes and go through sixty songs. It's just <laughs> way i am but with this i'm like i actually could listen to these songs in its entirety so maybe that means something i don't know yeah well first off i want to point out i just noticed this now but i love how your setting and your zoom setting looks like the same exact color scheme as like the album cover it really visually connects in a way i don't know if that was intentional or not but oh no actually it's not but uh, you know what you're right i guess yeah i guess because the album is you know black and red yeah like it, it just blends into your background perfectly um but like you couldn't have described it better with that it takes you on a ride you know there's some albums that i say are kind of like shuffle friendly where you could kind of like approach it at a different angle and like you know kind of start off with any song but for this i need to start off with blackout and end with long cool woman in a way so um you mentioned that you don't start off with a preconceived vision in a way but like is there any sort of structure or any sort of uh sort of thing that ties every song together or sort of like a similar method behind the madness that applies to every song i wish i could say there was but there really isn't because again it's it's like i when i write songs you know i usually start with a melody that i have and i i you know thankfully for voice memos it's you know i hum into the phone and then myself and my my writing partner dan tracy uh we get together and I hum it to him and uh, he's got to decipher what that actually means. What's in my head. I almost hear the finished song in my head before we even, you know, take a stab at it. So that, that's, that's the way we work and it, and it's, and it works pretty well. Sometimes you are working on a song though for days or weeks or months. So like when you work on something for like a long period of time, is it harder to sort of like maintain that emotional spark or that main strike of inspiration when it first hits you? That's a good question. Yeah, it does. Because, again, I think, you know, look, in today's day, right, in the world today, I think we're we're on a daily roller coaster ride of emotions and all the crap that's going on in this world and what we're fed by media and everything else. And I think that reflects on what you're thinking that day. And if you, if it's not a good day, maybe that'll come out in more of a, an aggression, aggressive type song. But uh, yeah, I mean, what I like to do is when I write a song, I like to start it and we record it. And, you know, except for the vocals and stuff, we pretty much get through the whole thing. And then we finish the vocals, mix it, and then on to the next one. Well, uh, do you believe inspiration, this is a debate like I like to have with artists, do you believe inspiration is something that could actually be sought out in a way? Like, can you take inspiration like a book off a shelf? Or does inspiration not <clears throat> exist until it actually just strikes you? You know, I, 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 yeah, I do believe that you can do that. You know, there are people that write songs, you know, there, there are, there are story songs. If you listen to one cool woman, right. When the Hollies wrote that, that's a story song. You're telling you a re- that's a story, right? Um, you know, there, there's ways 
there's a lot of people that write songs they just rhyme words you know but yeah i mean inspiration of course you could read a book and be inspired you know if you listen to the song blackout the song blackout is actually about a girl that was following me on instagram and i and i would i followed her back and she's like this goth chick and and you know cute girl and and i would look at her stories and that was the inspiration for that song wow that's a really that's actually awesome and uh was blackout like her instagram handle or something like that or no but um you know she's like uh you know she's this you know this hot chick and she's pale face but everything black and and she's just like to follow her stories this, this girl's like can we push any more drama into your life? I mean, it's amazing, but it's that was the inspiration for that. I love how you really just made a modern day rock and roll, but love song. Cause we hear songs about girls all the time, but you really brought the modern twist to it, which I thought is great. You know, like, uh, I, you know, like typo negative had Christian woman. This is Instagram woman. So yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, and w- speaking of which, you did collaborate with a lot of great artists, featuring Johnny Kelly of Typo Negative, as you know, members of the Sixty Nine Eyes, and and you know you had uh, Tommy Victor of Prong on here. So Tommy like, Victor. yep. Did a, a lot of a uh, different. Did all these different artists bring new stuff in that maybe Love and Anger didn't have, and maybe bring in more territory that you never would have thought. Well, it's interesting on Love and Anger. Johnny Kelly played on three songs on there. Um, and when I was doing the, the label had asked me to do a duet and I'm like with, with Yerky from 69 eyes. And I'm like, what am I going to do a duet with two guys? Like, you know, it's kind of weird, but so I th- I'm thinking like, what were some of my favorite songs? Like as a kid and we did long, cool woman first. And then I decided, I'm like, you know, the kinks, they were like the original garage punk rock band of the 60s but what i remember when destroyer came out i thought it was such a huge sounding song so i'm like you know what let's take we'll take that song too and let's try see which one works better and actually they both really worked and uh so doing that when i figured we have yerky let's you know let me ask johnny and tommy if they would do it and of course they said yes and it was great having them on there because they bring a whole different element to everything how different of a creative mindset or like creative uh energy is channeled into black 29 as opposed to uh, playing with danzig is it almost a completely different form of self-expression or are you just channeled channeling the same energy and emotions into both projects Uh, I I like to think that I channel the same energy, you know, but obviously it's different types uh, type of songs. Somebody said to me, well, it doesn't sound like Danzig. I'm like, well, I certainly hope not. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I have this saying, be yourself because everyone else has been taken. It's like, why would I want to try to write a song like Danzig? That's, that's Glenn Danzig. He writes an amazing. He's already done it. You know, so I try to be, I try to channel the energy because I think, yeah, I mean, everything is energy. And besides that, it's like, you know, we, when we perform as Danzig, we try to give our all. I hate watching bands sit there or stand there and not move. I could stay home and put on the record, but whether you're recording or performing, you need that energy. It, I need the energy because that's the only way it works for me. If I don't feel it, then how how is it going to convey it to the audience? Yeah. I mean, and also to take like the center stage in a way as well, I'd imagine that there's almost like a new essence of performance that you have to master as well, right? It almost seems like you're unleashing a side of you that maybe has not been seen before. Yeah, I mean... Being a front person in a band is much different than being the bass player or the drummer. Yeah. It's a whole different uh, thing. I, you know, I, sometimes I, you know, when we're playing with Danzig, I look at Glenn and I'm like, how does he do that so well? You know, he just knows how to, you know, he could just look at the audience and people get 
go crazy, you know. Yeah. So it's 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 all about energy. Yeah. When I saw him uh, at AfterShock Festival, uh, it was uh, truly a force to be reckoned with. So. Yeah. That was a fun show. Yeah, that was and hot. Oh, wait, as hell. Did you see Danzig or the Misfits? Uh, it Danzig. Yeah, that was a fun show. Yeah, yeah. I I think uh, it was to replace Judas Priest too. So I thought that was a fantastic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, replacement. Yeah, it was it was my first time seeing it. So. Uh, I oh was wow! Very awesome. much worth the wait. Now I do got to ask this, and I'm sure that every interview that you're gonna do is probably gonna ask you the same question. And I know it's cliche to ask, "What does the band name mean?" But any band with a number in their title, I always ask whether it would be 200 stab wounds or 96 bitter beings. Is there a significance behind the number 29? Yeah, it's my birthday. Really? It's the my birthday is the 29th of June, oh. and so well, black I spelt it different, but uh i love playing roulette so i always bet black 29 and it usually comes out so i'm a i'm a one number guy when it comes to blackjack i put 25 bucks a spin and it pays 36 to one so you do the math it's like uh um, eight what was it, 800 oh no almost 800 bucks a win so it's like yeah isn't isn't that bad luck to tell to tell your gambling strategy though? I don't. Yeah. I, I don't want to be the Anybody reason. Anybody could do it. I don't want to be the reason you lose your house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. No, I'm not. I'm not that bad. <laughs> All right. Well, now that gambling is legal in uh, New York, I might have to hit up a casino after this interview because maybe maybe that luck ran off on me. I haven't had luck at the New York casinos. Yeah. Connecticut, yes. Jersey, yes, but not New York. Uh, well. I'm so. good to know. Good to know. I appreciate this insider info. <laughs> um, now, here comes the most difficult question of the interview. How do you know when you're finished with a song? You know, you don't. And one of the things about owning a home studio, uh, which I'm blessed to have, is, you know, when you're when you have to go pay time, time is money and the money is yours. So at some point you got to go, yeah, we're done. All right, because you'll, you'll spend your life savings uh, on, on recording. With your own studio, you don't, the only thing that, that there is is your time. And so you, you have that option to keep going back and changing. And at some point, you just have to stop and go, you know what? It's done. A friend of mine asked me the other day, he said, listening to the Black 29 would you right now go back and change anything about it? And I looked at him and I said, no. I mean, again, anything that I could do, yeah, sure. Can I adjust sounds here and there? Sure. Is it going to change anything? No, I don't think so. I mean, again, you can sit there and go over and over and over and, and you'll never be happy. You know, but at some point, I think as an artist, as being self-produced, you have to just be able to know when something hits that nerve of yours and then you got to move on. Yeah. Well, I interviewed uh, Vinny Moore uh, yesterday and he says, you know, when you're doing the solo stuff versus the stuff with UFO, like it, you know, it's all the pressure falls on you. You're your own boss. And that has its whole line of advantages, but also has its whole line of disadvantages. You can't really. Uh, Absolutely. You can't blame the bass player if something's wrong, right? No. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, look, the other reason why this is a much easier process for myself and Dan is that we're two people, right? When you get a band, a lot of times a band listens not for the song, but for their parts, right? So, and they'll constantly be going, oh, I can't hear this, and which is really, they can't hear themselves more. And again, they're not listening for the song, they're listening for the part. And in this case, Dan and I do everything on the record. So it's not that we're listening for each other's part. We're listening, we're recording for the song. Well, you led me perfectly so. into the next question, actually. I have two more questions for you. This is one of them. And sure. like, um, you know, when people tell me all the time, when I ask them how the making of an album is, and they say, oh, we all collectively came together. We all had mutual agreement. I don't really believe it. 
most of the time because if you're in a band whether it be one person whether it be a duet or a band with five people you're making a dozen or so songs you know with many different parts there's going to be room for disagreement but can that actually help could people being in different head spaces or feeling different things maybe add like a little bit of contrast to the material in some ways it works my old band morning noise uh kind of reunited and we've been writing new songs and it works when you have the basis the foundation of the song and you start getting the other guitar player and the bass player down and they start kind of putting different parts in um again sometimes as the originator of the the idea you already have that idea what it should be and you know sometimes you have to change things because there are other people involved and you have to get that input sometimes not easy especially if you're dead set against anybody else's idea and, and you really can't be but if you if it's a true band situation so it works sometimes and sometimes it just muddies the waters it, it depends there are people that like to add input just for the sake of making sure that they're heard uh but that doesn't always mean it's right yeah of course of course and uh the final question i wanted to ask you is is um because it feels like with this new album black 29 you took inspiration from many different sources i feel so much emotion behind it especially uh my perfect uh my favorite song uh, go go little one that one is just so catchy and so uh like hard to put down but like when you're writing a song that comes from a more external source of inspiration like blackout being about the instagram girl versus uh you know like a more personal song does it resonate with you differently or does it feel like you're channeling something different into the making of it you know there i, I you know that's a tough question to answer because again i don't when i start a song i don't have a an idea behind it how it's going to be because like i said i write from a melody first you know i'll hum something that's in my head and however it comes out it comes out uh again there's no uh, there's no like uh uh breathe like uh we're not about going and going you know what this song's going to sound like dance or this song's going to sound like the cult it's just we write it from my head <laughs> and then it comes out there are songs that didn't make it to the record because you listen to it go ah now nah, we'll revisit that another time it didn't work this time we have to I have tons of those you know so it's like like I said it has to hit my nerve if it hits my nerve then fine because there's songs again we do it and I'm like nah you know what I I doesn't work yeah, we put it away. You ever worried that's gonna end up as a B side one day to be the biggest hit you guys ever had? You never know, right? <laughs> exactly. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today, uh, and thank you for this am you. amazing new album. Um, I can't can't stress it enough. Check out the Waiting by Black Twenty Nine. Just anything else you would like to promote for any project you're involved with in terms of tours or new music in the works? Black Twenty Nine will be out there soon. Morning Noise will be out there. Uh, as well as uh, Danzig will be on the road this year as well. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Steve Zing of Black 29, The Waiting, out. Be sure to pick it up. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time. Take care, Alex. Thank you.